Hello there, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to set up a simple ping monitor on your Zabbix server. If you could be so kind and subscribe to the channel, support what we do, I would greatly appreciate you. If you'd like to hire us for a project, go ahead and head over to our website, Reasonable IT Services. Reasonable IT Services? It's Reasonable IT Service. I don't even know my own website. It's not plural. If you'd like to hire us for a project, please head over to reasonableitservice.com and contact us there. Now, without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so first things first, you need to make sure that the network node that you're going to be monitoring is able to reply to ping requests. Now, this could be getting blocked by a Windows firewall, a router, something in between that node and your Zabbix server, it's not going to work. So that does need to be opened. Um, yes, you can definitely use a public IP address. You can monitor that. You can monitor a local private IP address, so on and so forth. So first thing we're going to do is head over to configuration. We're going to go to hosts. Whoops. We're going to do create hosts. Host name, call it whatever you want. In my case, I'm going to be monitoring an old Windows 7 box. Visible name, you can put whatever you want. I usually just put the same thing. Templates, we're gonna select ICMP ping groups. I'm, in this case, I'm going to select uh, network devices. We're gonna add an interface, an agent, and we're gonna put the IP address of our node, of our network node. Um, you can see here that the Windows 7 computer I'm monitoring is live on my local subnet. It's replying to pings, we're good there. In some cases, you may have to go in and allow it through the Windows firewall uh, outside the scope of this video, but yeah, heads up on that. So I'm going to put the IP address here, and again, this is where you can put the public IP address as well. DNS name, you can generally just put the host name, but not going to worry about it. It's not really necessary. The IP address is enough in this case. Description, you can fill that out if you want. Um, everything else looks good here. I'm going to do add. And as you can see, since I specified a template, ICMP ping, it automatically comes over with triggers already. So the main one we're going to be focusing on is if, it's, if the node is failing pings altogether, then it's going to generate a high severity alert. And we're going to want to get an email notification about that, right? Because there's not much sense if you're not being notified. That's another configuration we're going to need to set up. Now we're going to create an action. We're going to go over to trigger actions. So this is basically, if a trigger is set off, what does Zabbix do, right? What action does it take? Well, we want it to report the problems to Zabbix administrators. So go ahead and click on that. Yeah, of course you want to make sure it's enabled. Let's go ahead and click add. And how is this going to be set up? Well, you have a plenty of different ways you can do it. We can use a trigger name, trigger, trigger severity. I like trigger severity because basically any triggers you have set up that alarm for a high severity, it's going to be included in this condition. So what we're gonna do next is under operator, it's gonna be equal to a high sev. So let's do add on that and operations. So what we want to do is add an operation and these defaults are okay. We're going to want to send to users and we're going to send it to the Zabbix admin. Send only to, we're going to use email. The rest of that looks good. You can create a custom message if you want. I'm going to leave it on the default for now. I'm going to click add. Now recovery operations, I'm not going to worry about that right now. However, update operations, I do want to include this because let's say the host comes back up and it recovered on its own. We want to receive another email that the host has successfully recovered. So let's do uh, send message as well, send to users. We're going to do the same thing, Zabbix administrator and email. We're going to do add on that. We're going to click update. Now we have to configure the email settings, the email SMTP settings on our Zabbix server. So we're going to click on administration. We're going to go down to media types. And under email, we're going to click the link there. And as you can see, I've already set up my Gmail settings here. 
okay? It's gonna be smtp.gmail.com. If you're using Office 365, you have your own mail server, whatever the case, AOL, Yahoo, you are going to basically just Google those SMTP settings and plug in the settings here. So if you're using Gmail, this will probably be even easier for you because I already have all the settings. Uh, don't really need to worry about these other settings. The defaults will suffice. And once that's all done and set up, you can click update. Now, one thing I want to note to you is you do have to enable a specific setting in order to use your Gmail SMTP settings successfully. And that is this option here. You're going to head over to myaccount.google.com less secure apps. And you want to be logged into your Gmail account. You'll come to this page. This needs to be turned on. I believe this is off by default. So what this is going to do is allow your Zabbix server to use the Gmail SMTP settings. So this does need to be on. Otherwise, authentication is going to fail. Okay, so once that's on, again, plug in those SMTP settings we just went over. Um, we're still not done just yet. So now we're going to head over to users, and we need to tell the Zabbix server. Um, because if you recall, we are sending an email to the admin, Zabbix administrator, right? Well, Zabbix needs to know what the Zabbix admin email address is. So we're going to update that here. You're going to click on media. You're going to do add. You're going to select email. And you're going to type in your Gmail account. And basically, you're associating this account, this email account, to the Zabbix admin user. And we're going to click add on that. And then another cool trick we can do to test this really quick, we can go to media types. And if you look over to your right, across from your email you'll see there's a test button or a test link let's click on that and we're going to send it to my gmail account i'm going to click test uh, okay and you do want to get a media type test successful if it errors out on you here there's various errors you might get um, i would advise recheck your gmail settings and also to make sure that this is turned on now we're going to head over to my gmail account i'm already logged in and we're just going to make sure I got that test. And I sure did. Here it is. Very good. Everything's looking good so far. So, moving right along, we should be all set on the email notification now. Now, let's go over to monitoring. Let's go to hosts. And here is our Windows 7 host with the local IP address. Um, this will not turn green. I believe because it doesn't have an official Zabbix agent installed on the node, which in this case is the Windows 7 PC. However, if we go over to latest data, we can see that our latest, our last value for an ICMP ping is one up. So one is going to be up, zero is going to be down. What's cool about this, we can go over to graph and you can see we already have data. This green line here is when we added it to our Zabbix host. And as you can see, it correlates with one. And we can even click hold and select that section and zoom in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down this Windows 7 PC and I want to make sure everything works. A couple of things should happen here. We should see the non pingable Windows 7 box update in our graph here and this should drop to zero alternatively we should receive an email alert here in our gmail regarding this network node being down okay the host is still up patience patience aha there it goes request timed out so the host is clearly now down and we should see this reflected in our Zabbix monitor. Aha, there's that spike. We can also zoom in on that. We can see it's dropped to zero. So now I'm going to head over to my Gmail. I'm going to start refreshing my email. Why? Because I'm expecting a notification about this host being unpingable. Here we go. We'll check this out. The alert actually did come through. So we see a problem unavailable by ICMP ping. 
And look at this, it tells you the time it started, the date, the host, the severity, so very cool. Now, this is the problem report, but now that the host has recovered, we should be receiving another email letting us know that it's recovered. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we received our resolved email notification as expected. Awesome. All right, so there you go. You are now able to successfully monitor your hosts with ping using your Zabbix server. Awesome, and as a bonus, you get an email notification whenever your host may go down, and you get an email notification as you should whenever your host comes back up and recovers. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a like, subscribe, check out the website, check out the blog. I'm really trying to grow this channel, so your support is very much appreciated. Let me know what you wanna see next, and I'll see you in the next video.